Good to have you back. This is a British film adapted from a brilliant stage play featuring a much loved actor who was surrounded by a cast that is mostly unknown today, a writer director team that were better known for their work in television. And while that could hardly be considered a recipe for success, they did make a wonderful film, An Inspector Calls from 1954. The film is based on the 1945 stage play by J.B. Priestley, one of England's last great writers. He was from a generation of free thinkers who contemplated both science and philosophy in their writing. The paradoxical nature of the British character was something that intrigued Priestley. While having the strongest of literary traditions, the British can also be considered dull, stuffy, unimaginative, unromantic and in general uh, incredibly boring and uninteresting people. Uh, Priestley studied this inconsistency and eventually came up with a theory to explain it. By the time World War II came around, Priestley had become acutely aware that the British were losing their essential Englishness, as well as their creativity, and this film's story has its roots in that lament. An Inspector Calls is without doubt a morality play that asks us all to take extra care of each other, in particular of the strangers we encounter every day. But it's also a very clever murder mystery with full of deceptive twists and turns that is deeply satisfying. The screenplay was adapted by Desmond Davis, who worked mostly in TV during the 1940s and 1950s. His attachment to the production suggests that neither big budgets nor high hopes were part of the plan, but it is a much better film than anyone could have expected. As a film stage play, it doesn't make the mistake of confining the action to a single room, which is a great credit to the screenwriter. Director Guy Hamilton had developed a reputation for British stiff upper lip war dramas and action adventures laced with moments of sophisticated comedy. He was enthralled uh, with the films of Jean Renoir from a young age and so he pursued a career in film. In 1939 he got his first job as a clapper boy with Victorine Studios in Nice and worked his way up through the accounting department and as a producer's assistant until World War II forced him to evacuate from France. A short stint in the cutting room of British Paramount News provided an excellent background in editing until he began wartime duties in the Royal Navy's 15th Moto gunboat flotilla. After the war, Hamilton worked for a number of years under Carol Reed, who became a mentor and a kind of father figure, and then for John Huston on The African Queen in 1951. And Inspector Calls was his third film as a director and by far his best. Hamilton's direction keeps us, the audience, uneasy and on edge through thoughtful and intelligent storytelling right to the end when we are surprised by the heart and the humanity of this story and its final surprising twist. But even without the surprise, it still has a powerful ending meaning you can watch this film repeatedly and still be enthralled by it. It has been photographed in a way that is perfect for the story being told. It feels claustrophobic. As the story unfolds and as the pressure mounts on the family at the centre of the drama, the tension is almost suffocating. While not technically polished, this film still looks very good. Some may consider the pace of the film slow, but words like considered, thoughtful and thought-provoking are better descriptors. The editing of Geoffrey Botterill is accomplished. He maintains a smooth flow despite the numerous flashbacks and the incorporation of so much backstory, a feat so many other films have been unable to achieve. There are several edits between shots designed to make you jump. The dramatic cuts with thunderous music to pool and the otherworldly lighting that sets him apart from those that he interrogates gives him a disturbing and demonic look. A number of changes were made in adapting the play to film. The inspector's name was changed from Ghoul to Pool to hide his supernatural nature, while the film also makes the inspector more explicitly supernatural. Although the play never shows Eva Smith, the film opens in flashbacks that show each member of the family's involvement in her life. The relationships between Eva and Gerald, and later Eric, are smoothed over in accordance with the censorship of the day. In the play, Eva is sacked for being involved in a strike. In the film, she is simply sacked for suggesting that the wages requested were necessary to live on. Having seen both the play and the film, I feel the changes make the film stronger. Alastair Sim plays the central and most important role in this film and his performance is powerful, finding the perfect balance between inquisitor, judge and moralist. Alistair had come to acting late, being 30 years old when he started acting on the London stage, and 35 when he made his film debut. At first Sims was not sure if he liked films. He felt the sequences were so disconnected and mechanical, and thought he would have difficulty getting into the skin of the characters. But he soon found that the care, precision, and concentrated energy associated with the shooting of each scene placed him into the right frame of mind. By 1950, Sim topped the cinematographer's popularity poll and the British cinema exhibitors poll, making him a good commercial choice for this film. But his film and theatrical experience allowed him to find the best approach to a filmed version of a much revered stage play. 
Sim is actually on screen for much less time than you might think after watching the film, but such is the power of his performance that he feels ever present. And while numerous different film versions have been based on this story, this is by far the best adaption. I've screened it to a number of audiences and they've always reacted well with a mixture of surprise and being quietly impressed. So a number of really good reasons to watch this particular film. A really fabulous story with a great moral behind it, really well told. Uh, its treatment by the filmmakers equally adds to that particular experience uh, and makes it a joy to watch. Uh, and perhaps most importantly, uh, the role of Alistair Sim in this particular film. He's a wonderful actor, a great character, uh, a much loved uh, British actor uh, of his period, but also he's perfect for this particular role. So what I'd suggest you do is uh, go to our website, find our virtual screenings page, uh, find the link to this particular film, click on it and watch it, see what you think, and as always, we'd love you to come back and provide your own sort of kind of feedback and input about what you thought about this film as well. And then we'll see you back again in the not too distant future for our next classic films review. Catch you next time.